Is Delta Airlines International Service what it once was? Watch this video to see what it's like now. We flew for nine hours to Santiago, Chile in order to reach one of the world's most unusual places, the Atacama Desert. Hello, Jet Setters. I'm Jeb Brooks from greenergrass.com. I used to ply the international skies with Delta Airlines all the time, but it's been far too long since I flew with Delta abroad. That changes tonight. Suzanne and I are making a trip from here in Greensboro, North Carolina, our home airport, down to Atlanta, where we'll pick up a flight to Santiago. Join us as we see how Delta's handling international travel these days. Our flight will take just over nine hours to cover 4,695 miles straight south. We'll stay in the same time zone the whole time as we climb as high as 39,000 feet on an overnight flight before landing in Chile at seven in the morning. Our trip didn't start in Atlanta. Instead, we had to fly there from our home airport to catch the long haul flight to Santiago. And the flight from Greensboro to Atlanta was a quick, smooth 47 minutes. It's our pleasure to welcome to Atlanta Archfield Jackson International Airport. Local time here is 6.14. With a little bit more than three hours uh, in terms of our layover, we're gonna head to the Sky Club, probably over in F, which is where we're leaving from. Also the best Sky Club in the Atlanta, uh, in the Atlanta airport. So let's head over there and check it out. And because we'd arrived into the B concourse, that meant a ride on Atlanta's world-famous plane train. It runs between Atlanta's seven concourses, making connections here just a bit easier. Before we check out the club, we've got to, we've got to take a look at the A330 that's taking us south tonight. So let's go check it out. This is such a capable airplane. It's got tremendous range and space, both for passengers and cargo. This was going to be a great flight. Let's go clubbing. I think I'm ready for some champagne. We can do that. <laughs> the Sky Club here in the F Terminal really is my favorite one in Atlanta, and I'll show you why once we can get in. Unfortunately, thanks to staffing challenges and an increased number of travelers these days, you might have to wait to get in like we did. Our delay, though, was only a couple of minutes. This outdoor terrace offers stunning views of the incredible operations here at Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport, not to mention the perfect backdrop for a toast. Here we go. Cheers. Cheers. Drink it. <laughs> Why do people always say that? Inside, you'll find a buffet with cold food, along with a few hot options, too. There's also a full bar. And as the sun slowly set, we enjoyed even more views of the ramp and a few snacks. Course one, salads. Macaroni salad, potato salad, salad salad. <laughs> Second course, chicken and mac and cheese. Not gonna lie, you'd probably find better at Polaris. As subscribers know, Suzanne is a United fan. We decided to try to visit the nearby Priority Pass Lounge, the club at ATL. Well, that was a swing and a miss. We thought that maybe once uh, Qatar was out of here, it'd be a little more empty, but uh, it was chock-a-block full, so no visit to the club today. Back to the Sky Club. So we went back to the Sky Club, where we passed some more time. Delta's connection times lately have been either extraordinarily short or really long. Last and final course, dessert. You know there's dinner on the plane, right? <laughs> Do you need some uh, lounge literature? We decided to pass on Kidney International and headed to the gate instead. Or this bird. Suzanne, have you ever taken an international flight leaving Atlanta? Scrolling through past trips, I don't think I have. Are you excited about your first one? Let's do it. This A330 has Delta's older business class seats in it. And quite frankly, it's been so long since I've flown long haul with Delta, I forgot they were still being used. Well, they're not my first choice. I prefer the Delta One suites, like on this 767-400, for example. The older ones, like we'll be on tonight, offer all the comforts you could ask for on a nine-hour flight. Let's take a look around. In this bag, you'll find a plush pillow and blanket. You'll have slippers, 
their headphones and a reading light too. Here, you'll find a headphone jack, USB power source, and a universal socket. In front, there's a remote control for the IFE, seat adjustment controls, and a button to release the screen. Down below, there's storage and more than enough foot room. There's an armrest you'll need to store for takeoff and landing. And above, you'll find reading lights and air vents. At the front of the cabin, the moving map and vital statistics about the flight are displayed throughout the journey. Cheers. I'm working on a video highlighting the vital work that line maintenance workers do at Delta for even more unique behind-the-scenes aviation and transportation content, be sure to subscribe. The view is terrible now, but it's gonna be really good tomorrow morning. I hope. The amenity kit included all of the essentials you'd want on an overnight flight like this. Our flight was fairly empty, and that meant there was plenty of overhead bin space. Welcome you to Flight 147 to Santiago, Chile. We'll be on our way here shortly. Uh, this evening is going to be 8 hours and 54 minutes. Mostly a nice ride, a little bit of weather over Panama, but other than that, it should be a decent ride this evening. Again, thank you for coming with us, and we hope you enjoy the flight. The jet bridge pulled away, and we were ready to depart. South America is my favorite continent for so many reasons. From the beautiful landscapes to the incredible food and the friendly people, my anticipation just reached a crescendo as we taxied out. This was also the first time Suzanne and I visited South America together. We had big plans, a lot of which I'll be posting here on the channel in the coming weeks. Have you been to South America or do you live there? What's your favorite part of it? Let me know in the comments. I'm always looking for new destinations. Once we were above 10,000 feet, I pulled out the tray table and settled in. You'll need an eye shade here. The light from these buttons shines all night long. Again, the IFE screen folds out and thankfully, Delta offers plenty of choices. Uh, this was a welcome development. It seemed like they'd cut a lot of selections in the past couple of years to save money and I'm glad to see, at least what seemed to me to be, more options. And of course, the map feature is always welcome. Flight attendants presented a menu, but passengers also receive an email inviting them to pre-order. That also opens up the chance to see some additional choices that don't appear on the paper menu. The halibut and the duck were only available to pre-order. I chose the duck because I like being able to say I had the duck on Delta or Delta's duck. We departed Atlanta at 9.40 p.m. and flight attendants offered an efficient service that still felt special and allowed passengers to get sleep as soon as possible. This was some great Delta service like the before times. We received a tray with bread, a salad, and potato and onion soup. Then my main course came, the duck on Delta. Duck can be difficult to prepare, it can be greasy, but the duck on Delta was really good. It was rich and delicious. I was glad to have selected it. Suzanne had the Creole Springer Mountain chicken with andouille sausage. Unfortunately, it was saltier than she would have liked, she said. Dessert was strawberry cake. Ice cream was also available. After dinner, as we passed Florida, I decided to take a walk. Delta's economy cabin on the A330 is arranged in a 242 configuration, a nice setup for couples. There's also a Comfort Plus section on this A330-300, which offers a bit more legroom than economy. In the front of the cabin, you'll find snacks laid out for the taking throughout the flight, but we were both full and tired. It was time for bed. So I pulled out the provided pillow and blanket and set up the bed. The seat lays out fully flat and provides about 80 inches of space. And, and that pillow and blanket are pretty nice, although I do miss Delta's old partnership with Weston. These coffin seats are a bit narrow, especially in the footwell, but I was so tired that it didn't matter. About four hours and 15 minutes later, I was up. 
I just don't sleep as well on these older airplanes as I do on newer ones. A350 sleep is just so much better, like by 20 numbers over the A330. And about two hours before landing, breakfast was served. The quiche Lorraine was nice, and I think the old adage that breakfast on planes just isn't as good, well, that's out the window. I've had many great breakfasts on board airlines all over the world, and I'd include this one in that mix. Landing in Santiago in the morning offers one of the world's greatest aviation experiences. Seeing the sun rise over the Andes Mountains is simply breathtaking and unforgettable. South America is my favorite continent, and views like these are only some of the reasons why. Keep an eye on the channel, there's a lot more from South America in the coming weeks. But for now, it's time for the unscientific Jeb score, in which we'll rate this flight using five factors. We'll look at the lounge, the seat, the food, the in-flight entertainment, and the service. First, the lounge. The Sky Club in F is the best one in Atlanta, and the outdoor terrace is such a highlight for the space. The food is certainly better than it was only a few months ago, but these spaces do tend to be crowded, and messes don't always get cleaned up as quickly as, as before, so that makes it unclear whether seats are actually available. The lounge earns three stars. The seat is showing its age, especially when compared to some of Delta's more modern industry-leading seats. That said, it has everything you want, but it's not the same Delta One experience you'll have if you're in a newer cabin. It was still comfortable and offered a great space to spread out along with plenty of storage. The seat earns four stars. I loved the food on board. It wasn't the typical beef, chicken, or fish options you'll find on most airlines. Instead, Delta has allowed their caterers to be a bit more adventurous, and I like that. International flights are occasions, and dining is a key element. Breakfast was also good. I love the quiche, and Suzanne really enjoyed the bagel. Five stars here. The in-flight entertainment offered plenty of choices, but the screen, like the seat, feels outdated. It's not like it was hard to see or, or operate, though, so thanks to a wealth of choices and a solid map, the IFE earns four stars. The service was impeccable. I feel like Delta is back. Over the last couple of years, the service experience at Delta has become unpredictable, or sometimes even non-existent. But that's less the case now. It's like Delta flight attendants have been given the opportunity to shine again by offering the kind of customer-focused service I know they want to present. Five stars for the crew. So that leaves Delta's A330 service from Atlanta to Santiago with 21 out of 25 possible stars. Between now and the next time, see you in the sky.